again, when you're looking at combinations, patterns uh, are often stunning. So in this case right here, let's look at a pattern that is incredibly useful in combinations. Before we talk about what's happening, that's my question mark down there. Take a moment, pause the video, and fill out the question mark. When you're ready, press play, and we'll talk about it together. Okay, so this pattern right here is showing something fundamentally interesting, I think, about combinations. So I'm going to start by putting the answer here. Um, actually, before I say that, let me just back up a second. In each of these examples, what pattern is happening? Well, I notice that these numbers are the same across on both equal sign on um, on both sides of the equal sign, and so are these numbers here. So it makes sense that these numbers are equal. But what are the other pairs of numbers? What about three and two? Those are different numbers. Or two and ninety-eight. You might notice that those pairs of numbers add up to n, the number of elements in the set, right? Three plus two, two plus three, or three plus two is five, and two plus ninety-eight is a hundred. So what do we expect to maybe happen down here? We get a 1 and here, 49, because 1 and 49 is 50. And in general, what we can say is that if you have n objects, you're picking r of them, it's going to equal when you have n objects and you're choosing n minus r of them. And that's just a fancy way of seeing what we have in this pattern. Here you have 50 objects, you're choosing one of them. It's the same as having 50 objects and choosing 50 minus one of them. Or here, having 100 objects and choosing two of them is the same as having 100 objects and choosing 100 minus two of them. Now, before we prove this, let's use the smallest example in our set, our pattern here, to prove why this makes perfect sense. So over here, we have, we have five objects. Let's use letters, right? Five things we're picking from A, B, C, D, and E. So on the left-hand side of the equation, we have five objects, we're picking three. So, as an example, I could pick A and B and C, right? I could pick those three letters. And this is my group of three. That's one group of three. But what's so cool about that is that on the other side, when you pick three letters, what are you not picking? You're not picking two. So here, What's fascinating is that if you're picking three letters, you are not picking two. In other words, every time you pick a group of three, you're also leaving out a group of two. So it makes sense that all the ways to pick groups of threes also count all the ways to leave out groups of two and vice versa. If you are counting a group of two, you're not counting a group of three. So if I was to list out all the groups of two, what would be left or an equal is all of the groups and three, because for each group of two, I count, I leave out one group of three, and for each group of three, I count, I leave out one group of two. And in mathematics, that's happening down here. For each group of R I pick out, I'm leaving out N minus R choices. So those are, those are going to give you the same number of groups. But let's prove that algebraically. On this side of the equation, we have N factorial over R factorial and N minus R factorial. On the other side, we have n factorial over, not r factorial, but n minus r factorial, and n minus, n minus r factorial. And right here, we distribute our negative sign, and that's going to be n minus n plus r, right? We subtract the n and subtract a negative r, and here, n minus n plus r, what is that? Well, it's 0 plus r, or just r, right? So this equals r. So this whole right-hand side of the equation, right here, this thing, can be re rewritten as n over n minus r factorial. And this is just r times r factorial. Does it look familiar to you? Because it is identical to this right here. These two terms are just in opposite order, and the commutative property allows us to reverse them. Factorial there, and a factorial there, sorry. So n factorial over n minus r. That's not going to work. No, I want to switch them so you can see they are identical. Times n minus r factorial. So all I did was reverse these two using the commutative property, and I have exactly this. So these two things are exactly equal, which means that these two things are exactly equal. Isn't math beautiful?